Hey guys, Alexander here, and in this video, I'm going to be covering everything you need to know about moment generating functions to have to successfully tackle them in your undergraduate studies of probability theory and statistics. So let's get started. Moment generating functions, or MGFs, as I as they are usually abbreviated, are very useful tools for analyzing distributions. So what do we even use moment generating functions for? I mean, a lot of the time you're just thrown this theory, you're just thrown a formula, you're just thrown the definition. So I'm going to start before even defining it, before even talking about any math. I'm going to tell you what do we use it for, how can we use it, and how will it be useful to us? So firstly, MGFs can be used to calculate the moments of a distribution. I mean, it's in the name, moment generating function. So if I take the first derivative of a moment generating function, I get the first moment. The second derivative, I get the second moment. So moment generating functions are useful as a very quick tool to calculate the moments of a distribution. And that's very helpful in the fields of statistics, because sometimes you need um, the fourth moment or you need the third moment of a distribution. Well, how do I calculate that? Well, you use the moment generating function. It can quickly give you the result if you just know how to do derivatives. Moment generating functions can also be used to determine the distribution that a random variable follows. If you know a specific random variable has this moment generating function and you see that your random variable also has that same moment generating function, then you know that your random variable follows that particular distribution. So to sum it up, think of moment generating functions as the clone of a distribution's probability mass function or probability density function. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two. Say I want to analyze a disease or something that could affect you. Well, I can go test you, but I can also test your clone. Why not use your clone? So let's go analyze your clone. Let's go check his blood, draw blood from him. Let's look at his characteristics. Let's analyze him or her. Your clone has the same DNA as what you will have. And this same idea with the moment generating function, it has the same DNA. It has the same characteristics of the distribution, the probability distribution that it is associated with. It is embedded in it. So moment generating functions are a very useful tool for analyzing distributions. So let's go and look at the actual characteristics and definitions of a moment generating function. Firstly, the uniqueness of a moment generating function. If the moment generating function of a random variable x exists for t on an open interval, containing zero, then it uniquely determines the cumulative distribution function. So, keywords, unique, cumulative distribution. No two different distributions have the same moment generating function. If you can find the moment generating function of your distribution and it exists, then you know it has to follow that particular that particular distribution's moment generating function. If you go and look at another random variable and its moment generating function is the same as a known distribution, then you know it has to follow that distribution. So let's get to the actual definition. The definition of a moment generating function is usually denoted as phi x of t, which is the expected value of e to the t x. And Note as well that some people in some textbooks refer to it as mx of t. m of t or phi of t, it doesn't really matter, as long as you use this as the definition. This will always be the definition of a moment generating function. So let's look at the discrete case. For a discrete case, we know the expected value of e to the tx is the summation of all the values that x can take of e to the tx times the probability mass function, the PMF of the distribution. So it's e to the tx times the PMF. For the continuous case, it's very similar. We integrate over all the real numbers of e to the tx times the PDF, the probability density function, dx, of course. So the definition is very simple. It's the summation 
of e to the tx times the pmf for the discrete case or it's the integration of e to the tx times the pdf for the continuous case so to use the moment generating function to get the nth order moment we must note that the order of the derivatives of the moment generating function so order of the derivatives of the moment generating function of a random variable correspond to the same order of the moments when we set t equal to zero so the first derivative phi x evaluated at zero is always going to be the expected value of x the second derivative is always going to be the expected value of x squared so we've already derived in the previous videos covering continuous and discrete distributions the shortcut formula for the variance so let me quote it for you in terms of moment generating functions as well the variance of x is equal to the expected value of x squared which is the second derivative of the moment generating function evaluated at t equals zero and then we subtract from it the square of the first derivative of the moment generating function evaluated at t equals zero so that's how we use the moment generating function to calculate the order of the moments if you have the nth order derivative of the moment generating function that corresponds to the nth order moment of your random variable or your distribution so let's look at some very important tricks and results of the moment generating function the moment generating a function of the sum this is very important and very useful for deriving the moment generating functions of many distributions and in particular i will highlight that they will they are used for the binomial the negative binomial the gamma distribution and the chi square you will see me use these results for deriving the moment generating functions of all of these distributions as long as we have a sum of independent random variables we can use the moment generating function of the sum and i will cover its proof over here for you so the first one is a very simple example if x and y are independent random variables then the moment generating function of the sum of x and y is equal to the product of the individual moment generating functions of x and y so let's actually go and use the definition of the moment generating function and derive this result so the expected value of e to the t times x plus y is equal to the expected value of e to the t x plus t y and this can be written as expected value of e to the t x times e to the t y and since x and y are independent we can write this as the products of the individual expectations and we can only do this if they are independent okay remember that if they are independent you can write the expected value of the product as the product of the individual expectations okay so this is just phi x of t and this is phi y of t so as simple as that that's how we show that if x and y are independent then the moment generating function of their sum is simply equal to the product of the individual moment generating functions if we have n random variables that are all independent they have to be independent then the moment generating function of the sum of these n random variables is equal to the product of the individual moment generating functions well how do we prove this if we just show that we have the expected value of e to the t times x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xn then this is going to be equal to the expected value of e to the t x1 plus t x2 all the way up to the x n okay and this is going to be equal to so what we showed over here since each of these are independent random variables it's equal to the expected value of e to the t x1 
times the expected value of e to the t x2 all the way up to e to the t x n, the expected value of e to the t x n, which is equal to the products of each of these individual moment generating functions. As simple as that. And this is a very crucial result. Remember this result. It is very helpful for these distributions. The binomial, the negative binomial, the gamma, and the chi-square distribution. You can use this result to derive each one of these moment generating functions if you have knowledge of what their constituent distributions uh, as moment generating functions are. So this is very helpful. This result is extremely helpful to you. I recommend that you memorize it or write it down, stick it up against your wall, because you will use this result somewhere throughout your studies of statistics. I can almost guarantee it if you ever have to deal with moment generating functions. And lastly, if we are dealing with moment generating functions with some constants, well, if we let A and B both be constants, and if we are given that the moment generating function of a random variable x is phi x of t, then what is the moment generating function of a times x plus b in terms of the moment generating function of x? So phi of a x plus b uh, with a function in t is equal to e to the b t times phi of x of a t. Well, I'll prove it to you as well. By definition, the moment generating function is equal to the expected value of e to the t times ax plus b, which is equal to the expected value of e to the at times x plus bt. Note that bt is a constant with respect to the random variable x. That's non-stochastic, it's non-random. So we can bring that outside, we can factor it out. So it's e to the bt times the expected value of e to the at times x. If we see this at is also just a constant, it's a constant times t. So we can think of it as our mu t. So the moment generating function of ax plus b t in terms of the original moment generating function phi x of t is simply equal to e to the bt times phi x of a t and that's the proof for this result and this is a very helpful result you can see if we let b equal to zero then we are we it would be very useful to simply have a times the moment generating function for a certain random variable x. So it's the product or the summation of a identical random variables that are all x. So this formula with the constants is very useful and very applicable. I'll give you an example here for a result that you'll derive much later in the course, but it's just to give you a motivating example. Let's consider x mx of t, I'll just use the m notation here, which is equal to phi x of t, is equal to lambda over lambda minus t. This is the moment generating function for an exponentially distributed random variable with a rate parameter of lambda. What will be the moment generating function of 2x of t? We know from this formula, it's going to be equal to b is equal to zero because we're not adding any constant to it so b is zero so e to the zero times t is simply going to be one so it's going to be equal to the m of x at 2t so go plug that in go change t to 2t so it's lambda over lambda minus 2t and that's your new moment generating function but notice something we have a constant multiplied by t here. We can go divide that constant into this uh, fraction over here. If we divide the 2 into it, then it becomes lambda over 2 divided by lambda over 2 minus t. These are essentially equivalent. So what we see from this is that this 2x 
is then it's it's still an exponential because we still have this as our right parameter we still have a right parameter that is of a form but we're now going to have an exponentially distributed random variable with a right parameter of lambda over two and what's the mean of this guy well its expected value is going to be equal to of 2x is equal to the first derivative of the moment generating function. So let's go take the derivative with respect to t. It's going to be lambda over 2, negative lambda over 2, because we bring, we have a, this t in the denominator, times lambda over 2 minus t to the power of negative 2 times negative 1, because we have to take the chain. So it becomes lambda over 2 divided by lambda over 2 minus t squared. Let's evaluate that at t equals 0. It becomes lambda over 2 divided by lambda over 2 squared, which is equal to 1 over lambda over 2, which is equal to 2 over lambda, which is twice the expected value of x. So we see that the shortcut formula can be very helpful and can be very useful. It is a general, a general formula that can give you a very quick answer to what distribution will your random variable follow if it's been multiplied by some constant and some constants added to it as well. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has made your understanding of moment generating functions just that much be better and made your pursuits of statistics and probability theory much more enjoyable. Boer Commander out.